I'm sure we're all quite familiar with this gospel passage about the wise and the foolish bridesmaids. One of the things our Lord is trying to reiterate in this parable that he gives us is the need to be ready and the need to be prepared. So the, the bridegroom and uh, this wedding that, that is being referred to, it's an analogy for the kingdom of God for when Christ returns in glory. And the question is, are we prepared to meet him? And not only at the end of time when Christ returns in glory, but we will meet our Lord or we will appear before the judgment of God at our death. And so that too is a question we need to ponder. Am I prepared for death? Am I prepared to appear before the judgment of God? So this need for preparation. Now notice the wise um, bridesmaids, they, they took oil for their lamps. In other words, they planned ahead. They thought ahead and took steps. And so the importance of being wise, and this is reiterated in today's first reading from the Book of Wisdom. And it might be good for you to reread that passage from the Book of Wisdom or just to read the entire Book of Wisdom because wisdom is very beneficial for us. But the ideal is we all be, be wise. Now notice how it mentions that, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care. Another there's one who is vigilant on account of wisdom or because of wisdom is vigilant. That person will soon be free from care. Wouldn't it be nice to be free from care? From so much worry and anxiety? So how do we understand this? What, is it, what does it mean to be free from care? You know, there's two senses in which we can understand this. If a person is truly wise, they're going to make good decisions in their lives. And when a person is wise, they're going to live their life the way that God calls them to, so God will bless them. So things will go well for them. Um, you know, they'll, they'll live in peace and, and luxury, maybe not luxury, but, but they'll, they'll live a fairly decent life. God is going to bless them. The other sense in which we can understand this is that when a person is truly wise, they understand that God is always there for them. They understand that God loves them. They understand that as long as they don't sin or separate themselves from God, they're on their way to heaven. And so they don't really need to worry. Yes, difficulties may come, trials, tribulations, even sufferings, eventually even death, but they don't need to worry. They can be free from care because they trust in God. They entrust themselves completely to God. It's been said that when someone gets old, they become wise. So there's a saying that older people are wiser people. And in general, that's true. It's not always the case. But in general, there's a lot of truth to that. And part of the reason is because older people, they've had so many experiences of life and they can relate uh, more to, to other things. But also they realize, you know, when they were young, they worried about so many things that's not really worth worrying about. So they, they see things from a different perspective. They see things from a broader perspective. Think of young children. When we're young, we tend to kind of have this tunnel vision. We can only focus on one thing at a time. It's hard for us to see the bigger picture. So think, for example, when a child is given a gift, let's say a toy, and the child really loves the toy and just becomes absorbed in the toy, and the parents often have to remind the child, you know, Please say thank you. In other words, they, they overlook that aspect. But as they get older, they realize, okay, it's not just about the gift. It's also about the giver. It's not just about the giver, but also what I need to do in relation to the giver to give thanks. So as we grow, we kind of see the bigger picture. You know, eventually we get older and we're interested in politics and world events, right? We, we want to see the big picture. So older people, they tend to see the bigger picture. And not only in regards to life events, but even in regards to the very meaning of our existence, the purpose of our existence. In other words, our whole lives. What is the meaning of it all? Wisdom is, 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 uh, is a gift from God that looks to the end of all things. So the end of our life, the reality of judgment after death, the reality of heaven and hell which awaits us. So a wise person makes their decisions 
in sight of all these things, consciously aware of all these things. And so they tend to make the right decisions. So wisdom is something that we should acquire and we shouldn't wait to be old in order to acquire wisdom. We should acquire wisdom right now, no matter what age we are. And the question is, well, how do we acquire wisdom? If you read the Book of Wisdom, in fact, even in today's uh, first reading, one of the things it says is that um, wisdom is found by those who seek her. So we need to seek wisdom. But also it says one who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty for she will be found sitting at the gate. So one who rises early to seek wisdom will have no difficulty for she will be found sitting at the gate. And it's not just waking up early, but what are you going to do with that extra time that you have when you wake up early? You need to pray. You need to connect with God. In another part of the Book of Wisdom, it mentions that those who seek wisdom are open to instruction, are willing to take instruction. In other words, they acknowledge that there's people who are perhaps more elderly than I am, people who are wiser than I am. They can give me a lot of good advice. So in other words, a person who seeks wisdom seeks instruction. They might want to read. They might want to you know, talk to people who, who have wisdom about certain things. But where is the greatest wisdom contained? The revelation of God, the official teachings of the church, the sacred scriptures, the word of God in sacred scripture. You know, the, the word of God is alive and acting. When people first convert and they start reading the scripture, they just have like a superficial understanding of things. But as we mature and grow in the faith, we get a deeper insight into the meaning of Scripture. And the, the wonderful thing about Scripture is that no matter how many times you read it, the same passage, like you get a deeper insight every time you read it. Because a lot of people, they, you know, they're, they're so busy following the news and so many other things and other sources of information, but they neglect the Scriptures. They say, oh, I know that. I know that parable. I've heard it so many times. That may be so. But we need to reflect on it again and again and to reapply those important messages to our lives because we tend to forget. We tend not to live out wisdom as we should. So when we pray, we connect with God. And so God is going to give us his blessings, his inspirations, his insights. In other words, he's going to fill us with wisdom every time we pray. So simply by praying, we're going to receive more wisdom. We will grow in wisdom. And yes, we should ask in prayer for the gift of wisdom, to ask it from God. But we should also make the effort to know our prayer, to know the scriptures, to meditate on the scriptures, especially the New Testament. And the other thing in regards to being wise is what our Lord is referring to in today's gospel reading. So church fathers, when they comment on this passage that we just heard, they say the lamps that the bridesmaids have symbolizes faith. So in order to make it into the kingdom of God, you need to have faith. But as St. James points out, faith without works is dead. So in other words, the lamp must be lit. But the lamp can only be lit if there's enough oil in the lamp. So what does the oil represent? Church fathers say the oil symbolizes Charity, charitable works, not just doing here and there, but having the habit of charity, which means having the habit of loving God, having the habit of wanting to have a relationship with God. In other words, having a regular routine of prayer. St. Augustine says that someone who doesn't pray every day is not going to make it to heaven. In other words, they don't want to have a relationship with God. What does it mean to pray every day? There's a lot of people say, oh, I pray all the time. No, we need to set aside specific time for prayer. In other words, we may need to wake up early in order to ensure that we are spending enough quality time in the presence of God in prayer. So we need to do that. So the oil symbolizes these acts of charity, first and foremost towards God, but secondly, towards our neighbor. Now, when I tell, you know, young people, oh, you need to pray, you need to read the scriptures, you need to come to church, you need to receive the sacraments, and they don't want to hear that. That's boring. That's what they say. 
You know, young people, they just want to have fun. They might worry about a few things. They might worry about getting good grades. They might worry about getting a job when they're a little bit older. They might worry about finding a suitable spouse. They might worry about their immediate future, like maybe their retirement. But they don't want to spend time praying or going to church or reading the Bible. That's too boring. But we need to do these things because when we do these things, God will bless us. A young person who prays, they're going to do better in school. They're going to, probably going to get better marks. They're going to make better decisions in their lives. God will help them to get a better job or help them to do well on their interview. God is going to bless them if they seek wisdom. And in regards to you know, a potential spouse, God will also help them discern, is this the right person? Do you, God, do you really think I should marry this person? It's not an easy decision. So we need to seek wisdom. But, but as I mentioned, we also need to put charity into practice. And I wanted to give you a little kind of analogy. You know, take, for example, marriage and marital love. Now, we can apply this to any relationship, parent-child relationship, friendship, and, you know. Um, but let's just take two extremes in regards to marriage. On one end of the scale, we have a couple and let's say they're both identical in their approach. They, they say they love each other, but what they really love is the good that they can get from the other. But each one is extremely selfish. Not self-giving, not full of love, but selfish. And when we are selfish, we're also proud. So whenever there's problems in the relationship, the tendency is to blame the other, to point the accusatory finger at the other. And so they tend to have a lot of conflicts, a lot of fights. They're not happy. And, you know, these kinds of relationships in the long run are, are not going to turn out very well. Now, the other extreme is a couple who are filled with great charity, but also with great wisdom. And in their wisdom, they understand that God has called them to this state of marriage. And so they need to do the best job that they can to be the best spouse or the best parent that they possibly can be. And in their humility, they also acknowledge their sinful inclinations that occasionally they fall, they do things, but they're very quick to express their sorrow, to ask for forgiveness. And in their humility, their acknowledgement of their own shortcomings and their own inclination to sin, they also acknowledge, okay, my spouse also is inclined to fall and to make mistakes. And so they're very understanding, very compassionate, very forgiving. And because they're both filled with charity, each one is trying to do their part to make the relationship work and to take care of the home and the kids and everything that needs to be done. And so they're very happy very content. Now, as I mentioned, there's these two extremes. And most people are somewhere in between. But on what side of the center are you on? Not just in marriage, but in all relationships, including our relationship with God. So we need to be wise. We need to make wise decisions. God loves us. God wants to share his wisdom with all of us. How do we acquire this wisdom? Pray. Ask God for wisdom. But spend quality time in prayer daily. Read the scriptures, the greatest source of God's wisdom, especially the New Testament. Seek to be enlightened. Seek knowledge. Get to know your faith. But also, put your faith into action. Practice charity.